everybody. We're having some meetings. I know you're going to be watching a couple of them. We have a lot of people here today. A lot of subjects under discussion, including Venezuela, including, of course, North Korea and other things. And I think we're making tremendous headway. Uh, we'll be spending quite a bit of time here. And then we, uh, during the weekend, as you know, toward the end, we go into Manhattan, where I have a lot of meetings scheduled in Manhattan. Any questions? Mr. President, the North Koreans uh, said yesterday that your statement on Tuesday was nonsense. That's the word that they used. Do you have any response to that? Well, I don't think they mean that. And I think they, uh, it's the first time they've heard it like they heard it. Uh, and frankly, uh, the people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. They've been doing this to our country for a long time, for many years. And it's about time that somebody stuck up for the people of this country and for the people of other countries. So, uh, if anything, maybe that statement wasn't tough enough. And we're backed by 100 percent by our military. We're backed by everybody. And we're backed by many other leaders. And I noticed that many senators and others today came out very much in favor of what I said. But if anything, that statement may not be tough enough. What would be tougher than firing Gary? Well, you'll see. You'll see. Mr. President, is one of the options being considered a preemptive strike or strike? Well, we don't talk about that. I never do. I'm not like the other administration that would say we're going into Mosul in four months. I don't talk about it. We'll see what happens. But I can tell you that what they've been doing and what they've been getting away with is a tragedy, and it can't be allowed. Sure. We'll always consider negotiations, but they've been negotiating now for 25 years. Look at Clinton. He folded on the negotiations. He was weak and ineffective. You look what happened with Bush. You look what happened with Obama. Obama, he didn't even want to talk about it. But I talk. It's about time. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it. There are no mixed messages. There are no mixed messages. I heard, uh, I mean, to be honest, uh, General Mattis may have taken it a step beyond what I said. Uh, there are no mixed messages. And Rex was just, you know, stating the view. But look, here's the view. I said it yesterday. I don't have to say it again. And I'll tell you this. It may be tougher than I said it, not less. It may very well be tougher than I said it. Okay? How about one more? Can you offer any assurance to the American people who are understandably anxious about the situation with North Korea? They see images of these missiles coming up in the air, the threats are long, they see your statement about fire and fury. Should they be comfortable that you have this under The people of this country should be very comfortable. And I will tell you this, if North Korea does anything in terms of even thinking about attack, of anybody that we love or we represent or our allies or us, they can be very, very nervous. I'll tell you what, and they should be very nervous because things will happen to them like they never thought possible, okay? He's been pushing the world around for a long time, and I have great respect for what China and what Russia did and those 15, we got a 15 to nothing vote. I have great respect for China and Russia, what they did on sanctions. I believe that will have an effect. I don't think it will have the kind of effect, even though I was the one, we were the ones that got it. And Nikki Haley did a great job. We all did a great job. But I have great respect for what they did. I have great respect for the 15 to nothing, but probably it will not be as effective as a lot of people think it can be, unfortunately. Can China do more? I think China can do a lot more, yes. China can, and I think China will do a lot more. Look. We have trade with China. We lose hundreds of billions of dollars a year on trade with China. They know how I feel. It's not going to continue like that. But if China helps us, I feel a lot differently toward trade. A lot differently toward trade. The people of our country are safe. Our allies are safe. And I will tell you this. North Korea better get their act together or they're going to be in trouble like few nations ever have been in trouble in this we world. Begin with breaking news, that headline North Korea just a short time ago issuing its newest threat. The AP now reporting that the North Korean regime is calling President Trump's words a load of nonsense, saying they will complete their plan to, quote, attack waters near Guam by mid-August. 
It comes after President Trump warned North Korea against making any more threats or the U.S. would unleash fire and fury unlike anything the world has ever seen. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega leading us off. Tonight, a new threat from North Korea coming in, saying they will be ready to attack the U.S. territory of Guam by mid-August. This comes as President Trump's warning shot fired directly at Pyongyang tonight is sending shockwaves around the world. But ABC News has learned that threat caught some in the president's own inner circle by surprise. The president in that statement using language not vetted or pre-approved by his national security team. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Sources close to the president say behind closed doors with top aides, including new chief of staff General John Kelly, President Trump had discussed taking a tougher tone on Pyongyang. But even members of his own national security team had no idea the president would go so far. He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. Within a few hours, North Korea responding with its own warning, saying it is seriously considering a plan to target Guam with missiles. The U.S. territory, home to crucial military bases and 160,000 Americans, is just 2,000 miles away. The Pentagon has prepared a specific strike plan for a preemptive attack on North Korea should the president order one. Key to that plan, two senior military officials and two senior retired officers tell us the battle-tested B-1 bomber, seen here in a military video training for such a mission. The B-1, recently updated, has been a workhorse in Afghanistan and Iraq. Since the end of May, the B-1s have accelerated their training, conducting 11 practice runs, including one on Monday. You have a new book coming out, The America We Deserve, uh, which I've had a chance to get some excerpts given to me by your office. Let me talk about some of the issues. One is North Korea. And you say that you, as president, would be willing to launch a preemptive strike against North Korea's nuclear capability. First, I'd negotiate. I would negotiate like crazy, and I'd make sure that we tried to get the best deal possible. Look, Tim, if a man walks up to you in a street in Washington, because this doesn't happen, of course, in New York, but if a man walks up and puts a gun to your head and says, give me your money, wouldn't you rather know where he's coming from before he had the gun in his hand? And these people, in three or four years, are going to be having nuclear weapons. They're going to have those weapons pointed all over the world and specifically at the United States. And wouldn't you be better off solving this really potentially unbelievable, and the biggest problem, I mean, we can talk about the economy, we can talk about social security. The biggest problem this world has is nuclear proliferation. Six B-1s are positioned in Guam. They are not nuclear capable. Here's what they're training for. Pairs of B-1s supported overhead by satellites and drones, surrounded by fighter jets, as well as refueling and electronic warfare planes, have flown round trips, refueling multiple times, to practice what a real operation against North Korean missile sites might look like. The highly sophisticated strike package is designed to be largely invisible to facilitate a sneak attack. The targets, multiple sources say, approximately two dozen North Korean missile launch sites and support facilities, which intelligence officials tell NBC News they feel confident they have accurately identified. The B-1s can carry a mix of weapons, as many as 168 bombs, or more likely, the new JASM ER, a highly accurate missile that can be fired hundreds of miles outside North Korean airspace. Of all the military options you could consider, this would be one of the two or three that would be at least have a possibility of not escalating the situation. A single long-range strike against the nuclear program, a cyber offensive would be the second. Those are the only two military options that ought to be in serious consideration. Nonetheless, Admiral Stravides, who was the Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, says he would counsel the president against the use of the U.S. military at this point. Kim Jong-un would be compelled to respond. 
he would lash out militarily at a minimum against South Korea and potentially at uh, longer range targets, perhaps including Guam. That's a bad set of outcomes from where we sit today. And we have a country out there in North Korea, which is sort of wacko, which is not a, dumb, not a bunch of dummies, and they are going out and they are developing nuclear weapons. And they're not doing it because they're having fun doing it, they're doing it for a reason. And wouldn't it be good to sit down and really negotiate something, and ideally negotiate? Now, if that negotiation doesn't work, you better solve the problem now than solve it later, Tim. And you know it, and every politician knows it, and nobody wants to talk about it. Jimmy Carter, who I really like, and he went over there, he was so soft, these people are laughing at us. The former general of the Air Force, Merrill McPeak, the former Secretary of Defense, Les Aspen, said you could not launch a preemptive strike against North Korea because the nuclear fallout could be devastating to the Asian Peninsula. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about us using nuclear weapons. Then the president himself weighed in, tweeting, our nuclear arsenal is now far stronger and more powerful than ever before. Hopefully we will never have to use this power. But his initial words have sparked international reaction from New Zealand. Oh, I think the comments are not helpful in an environment that's very tense. To Germany's foreign office, saying saber rattling won't help. Even some in the president's own party, calling his words dangerous. All it's going to do is bring us closer to some kind of serious confrontation. I think this is very, very, very serious. The great leaders that I've seen, they don't threaten unless they are ready to act. Yeah. And I'm not sure that President Tr Trump is ready to act. I'm saying that they have areas where they're developing missiles. No, but taking out their nuclear you know that potential this country, would create Tim, a fallout. Tim, do you know that this country went out and gave them nuclear reactors free fuel for 10 years. We, we virtually tried to bribe them into stopping and they're continuing to do what they're doing and they're laughing at us, they think we're a bunch of dummies. I'm saying that we have to do something to stop. But if the military Ideally, told you, Mr. Trump, we can't do this. You give me two names, you're giving me two names, I don't know. Do you want to do it in five years when they have warheads all over the place, every one of them pointing to New York City, to Washington and every one of our, is that when you want to do it? Or do you want to do something now? You better do it now. And if they think you're serious, I deal with lots of people. If they think you're serious, they'll negotiate and it'll never come to that.